Hope is at the beginning of all things. Before there is light, there is hope in the darkness. Before there is rain, there is hope in the drought. Before there is peace, there is hope in the chaos. In the darkest moments, there is hope. Hope helps the broken heart heal. Hope is there so we can climb up from the pit and into the light. In a small village, a young girl was asked to believe in the impossible. She was asked to deliver hope into a world that would condemn her. She was given hope to conceive and she shared God's hope with us. To the lost, to the oppressed, so that everyone could have hope. Hope calls us out of darkness and whispers, Go, you are free. Hope is in the Christ child. Hope has entered the world. Good morning! It is finally Advent, and we've been waiting for Christmas, it feels like, for a long time. And so, join with us as we sing some Christmas carols and as we celebrate the birth of Christ for this whole month. I'm going to read from Isaiah 9, verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Amen. Isn't that what we long for? So let's sing and lift our voices, O come all ye faithful.
then it feels great to lift up our voices in Christmas songs. So let's continue with the song, Old Little Town of Bethlehem. Thank you. 
assurance that the Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. God, the hope you offer us is an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. When we encounter crisis, hope invites us to offer peace. When we encounter injustice, hope invites us to speak the truth. When we encounter the lonely, hope invites us to form community. When we encounter the marginalized, hope invites us to welcome and befriend. When we encounter the sick, the unemployed, the wounded, and the disheartened, hope invites us to share the generous, healing love of our God. Yes, Lord, for when we encounter each of these, whom you dearly love, we encounter you, the one who transforms, provides, heals, and forgives. It brings you joy when your children are filled with hope and respond with generosity. We light the candle of hope. But, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint.
it's been such a beautiful week yes. that we'd film outside. Yeah, but you know what? With that cool wind that came in last night, it's chilled down quite a bit. Sure has. And it's a, uh, I don't know, it feels a little drab. Yes. Out here. There, there is. Yes. It's drab. Yeah, it's, all the flowers are gone. It's chilly. Uh -huh. it, can you think of a warm, festive place? Ah, well, you know what? There, there is this one place, uh, and it, it's, it's in the doors there, in that building. Well, maybe we, we should just, check it out. We better, yeah, let's just go check it out. See all right, outside. let's see. There. Much cozier in here. Yeah, definitely. Even though we got snow and we got uh, reindeer breathing down our necks. True, true <laughs> that. But it's uh, definitely cozy. And uh, thanks to Mary and uh, Maggie in particular, they, uh, this is such a beautiful setting that they've given us yeah. for Advent. And on that note, if you haven't come by this last week, and we'll talk about that in, in a bit, you can definitely drop by and see this in person, spend some time in prayer here. As Bonnie Henry says, the buildings are not closed even though we're not hosting events here and uh, services. You can definitely come by and be blessed. We'd love to pray with you as pastors and encourage you. And, and you can spend some time enjoying this in person. And hopefully, as we get closer to Christmas, we'll be able to do that. Yes, hopefully. Yes, it will be nice to be able to do that over the Christmas season. But in the meantime, we're starting off Advent like this, and you're cozy at home, and watching and entering into the service, and we welcome you here and into the yes, service. For sure. Um, so some things. This is our community lifetime. We're, we're needing to let you in on what's going on. Mm -hmm. what, what have we got going on? Well, you know that craft for a cause that we've had on at the, at the building for a while, it's just done so well. It's, it's incredible that, you know, the, the artists and the crafters put their stuff in there. Amazing stuff. Uh, the vendors have been able to, to sell some of their things. I just got another order this morning. Please set all this aside. Mm -hmm. I'll come get it next week. I think we'll deliver it to you. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do that. But, sure. um, so it's been great, and including the Hopeful Gifts for Change, which has done so well. Thank you so much for supporting that. But you know what? Uh, if you've missed it, don't worry about it, because we're gonna, that's gonna be on for, for the next while, at least for the next week, maybe a little longer. Absolutely, so if you wanna donate to the Chagas Project in Bolivia, and I know we've all been learning about this disease that mm -hmm. ravages the poor families in Bolivia. Mm -hmm. A number of us are learning, continue to learn and understand what's going on there. You can give directly to that project as we bless Tim and Kelly, Tim and Kelly Hutton, gotta get that one right, yeah. and the ministry yeah. that CBM is doing down there. Yeah, or you can buy a goat or some uh, rabbits or chickens, whatever, you know, all kinds of things that yeah. you can help out with. We can bless people all around the world yes. with our gifts in a number of different ways. And they, they have these beautiful little ornaments that they've oh, made yes. up or missions commission that you can hang on your tree or you can give that to someone and say, yeah. hey, I gave to this, uh, to this needy situation on your behalf a couple of rabbits mm -hmm. or a goat or to Bolivia, to the Shaggis Project. So. Yeah, that's something that you can give to others. All right, well, let's see. Christmas continues. We're still going to do Christmas. Christmas yes. is not canceled, no matter how we're going to do it. One way that it's going to continue is Street Church mm. is doing their big Christmas dinner on December 13th. Yes. Chuck has a list of food items that he needs. Yep. So uh, if you are interested in that, contact Karen or Chuck and say we're willing to help out. Mm -hmm. um, and if... And if you can't do that... You know what they're looking for? They've, they've had such a response from the, uh, the people in the street as far as uh, the gospel goes that, uh, you know, they, they're looking for people to, to just stand by individuals out there in prayer and to lift them up, to help them in their, in their new walk. Lift up to the Lord. It's great. Prayer partners. Yes, These prayer partners. People, uh, street and trench folk are willing to, to say, yeah, I would love to be prayed for. 
by someone. Yes. And here's their name, and then you could be praying for them. Just praise how much difference that makes in their lives when they know someone them. cares for them that much. And because we can all use encouragement. Yes. Eh? Yeah. Um, and uh, speaking of that, our Finding Light in the Deepest Darkness seminar is tomorrow night, Monday night, November 30th. We're going to just, that's us, that's our church together. We're going to go through this material provided by Sanctuary Mental Health Ministries as we all are in just putting ourselves before God during this Advent season of waiting. Well, what do you have for us? How do we get through some of these dark times? Let's see, last. Let's be praying for each other. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and one way to do that is to have our phone encouragement ministry that yes. we just started up. We love chatting with people on the phone, but we can't connect with everybody every week. And uh, so we want to encourage you to say, yeah, I'll call one or two people a week and, and let's all be connecting with each other. So if you want to be a part of that ministry, mm -hmm. just let us know or uh, yeah. email us. And yeah. we'll be praying for each other. Yeah. We can line you up with a few to, that uh, can use some encouragement. A phone call once a week or whatever. It just, uh, yeah. Just a way of connecting, keeping connected uh, yeah. with each other. Because we all need that during this time. And we can be praying for each other in a number of different ways. Uh, speaking of which, I think we'll go to our prayer time now. And we can be praying for Mary. She is recovering. Now, I'm not sure. I think she's probably still in hospital by Sunday. Mm -hmm. And she went in for surgery on Friday. But by the, by the miracle of video, Dick and Mary are going to be right here leading us in our prayer time. Yeah, how about that? Hey. <laughs> so blessings on you this week. Good morning. This is the first week of Advent. And I'd like you to join me in a prayer for hope. Please bow your heads. Father God, every word in scripture points to the gift of hope that we have because of Christ Jesus. The Christmas story wasn't the beginning of that message of hope because the Old Testament is full of glimpses of your plan to redeem your people and restore them into our relationship with you. But we are able to truly begin to see and understand just how great your love for us is when we read the story of Jesus' birth in scripture. Help us to see that you are with us. Mm -hmm. Nothing is too difficult for you. Jesus came to give us the gift of eternal life through, the, through your salvation, and that is only you our Heavenly Father, can give when we believe in your Son, repent of our sins, and confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior. That first Christmas, you gave us the light, the gift of hope, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Thank you, Father, for your immeasurable gift in Jesus' precious name. Here we are, Lord. Um trying to adjust to all the things that have been happening since this uh, COVID business started. And uh, almost daily, it seems like there's new changes that we have to accept and adapt to. And so, Lord, uh, we, we really need your help and your guidance at this time, Lord. I'd like to start with uh, an extract from Psalm 91. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give you he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Lord, we just pray now for First Baptist Church, Lord, and for adherents and members and friends and the community at large. Lord, we pray that uh, you would give us the strength that we need right now, the determination uh, uh, to see 
uh, us through this, these times. We pray for unity in the church, Lord, uh, when we are so restricted in how we can gather together. Uh, Lord, we pray for strength and guidance for the leadership in the church, uh, the hospital ministry, uh, the street ministry. Uh, Lord, for those uh, members and friends and fam uh, families that uh, are suffering now, uh, different medical conditions or physical conditions, Lord, that you would be with them in a special way, Lord, that you would give them strength and hope. Lord, we trust you. We trust your word, Lord, and uh, we stand on that now, and we give you all praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we, as we've said a few times in the service already, are in Advent. We finally entered into Advent. As someone was saying, boy, they, were, they felt like the Acts series could have gone on, what happened next. But uh, we are, have put Acts behind us and have entered into Advent. Now, Advent is a word that means waiting. And for some, that will mean waiting for Christmas for Christmas gifts and for others it's just the hope of getting together with family which of course is not a sure hope this Christmas and of course we all hoped that we would be through this virus by now no doubt some hope that it would vanish miraculously over summer a false hope and well some are just hoping that a loved one will make it through this week without getting sick or they are sick. And, and others are hoping that we'll all learn a little bit more so that we can avoid passing this thing around as much as we are right now. Now, I want you to take a minute. When we think about hope and what we're waiting for, what are you waiting for? I want you just to chat with the person beside you or maybe type it in into the comments on the video. What are you waiting for? What are you hoping to do once this virus is completely done? Go ahead, just chat with someone beside you. Say what you want to just talk to them. All right, so maybe you type that in. Uh, maybe you still can. If you're figuring out how to do that, that's okay. Maybe you share it with someone beside you. Going to Disneyland, that's something that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, just getting together with all of you. Something I'm really looking forward to. Okay, Pope Francis says this, Advent increases our hope, a hope which does not disappoint. And someone, uh, I think it was our dear friend Grace, had shared that in one of her awesome newsletters that she sends. And I thought, well, that's a beautiful statement. Advent increases our hope, a hope which does not disappoint. And he adds, I found this out, I looked at it, it's on Twitter, and he adds, the Lord never lets us down, was the tweet that he had put out, to which one person replied, you say that, but my boiler's broken. To which someone else replied to them, then call a plumber, that's why God gave us plumbers. Be thankful you have a boiler. To which the reply came, I'm thankful God gave us plumbers, or really I am, but why would an omnipotent, benevolent God allow my heat exchanger to calcify? Question mark. And that, that's a good question. And how quickly we can be distracted and despair. Hope is a tricky thing. And Advent is something that helps us focus on what is our hope? What are we waiting for? What is our hope? The people of God throughout history throughout the whole Old Testament, put their hope in God. But sometimes it's hard to know what that looks like. What did it mean? Like here, I'll give you an example. If we look at Psalm 46, Psalm 46, we can see an example of this. It starts off with, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Now you'd think, okay, do they expect not to have any trouble? Not to have any fear? Is that their hope? Well, I hope we don't face any trouble. No, listen, right away, next verse. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, 
and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Uh, they didn't expect their circumstances to change necessarily, but their hope was that God was with them in the midst of it. Listen to how it continues, verse 4. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. And this, of course, is where we find God saying in verse 10, just a little farther down, Be still and know that I am God. They put their hope in God. It's Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, who wrote, Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. In the midst of their circumstances, they would put their hope in the Lord. But they also looked forward to a future hope. It was Isaiah in Isaiah 11 who also wrote, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. God's very presence on him. In that day... The root of Jesse will stand as a banner for all peoples and the nations will rally to him and his resting place will be glorious. Their hope was that God would be fully present to us again in a way that he hadn't been for years. So it's with this longing and this hope that we come to our reading today from Luke, our first reading in our series in Advent. And a special thanks to Sue and Hayun for doing that for us from Luke 1. Enter into the story with us. Sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pleaded to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your related, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. By the time we come to Mary, God's people have had 400 years of silence. The new temple that had been built had not been blessed with God's presence, its Shekinah glory. It seems that more and more they are on their own, that they'll have to take things into their own hands, and that the break of day that God will help them at isn't coming anytime soon. They're under the oppression of Rome, losing hope each day. Can you imagine how hard it would be to have hope, hope that things will change? 
I'm pretty sure you do. Whether it's something in your body, illness, sickness, whether it's a hope for healing and wholeness, maybe in a relationship with others that's really hard, or this blasted virus that we're dealing with, or mental health struggle, or, or maybe even a trauma from an injustice, injustice that continues to be perpetrated against you and your family or your people. We all hope for something and at times doubt whether it will come. Sometimes God surprises us, of course, just reaches in the kingdom of God, boom, wonderfully satisfying these deep needs and breaking into our mediocre existence in powerful ways, but often not, whether it's our boilers or otherwise. And we can ask the question, why in the world does does God uh, allow this seemingly ongoing cycle of hope and doubt to continue? Is there a purpose to it? And what we see when the angel tells Mary here that, that the Lord is with her, it's pretty exciting. She is, she's rightly more than a little nervous. In fact, when we look at in verse 29, it says that Mary was greatly troubled at his words, wondered what kind of greeting this must be. Of course, we've talked about this before. The angel would probably actually be quite terrifying, whether it was in like full military regalia, heavenly fight, I don't, whatever it looked like, I'm sure it wasn't a cute and cuddly cherubim with its fluffy wings. And the angel responds to her, has to respond to her, do not be afraid. This is our theme for Advent. In a, in a year where we've experienced a lot of fear and anxiety, the angel says to her, do not be afraid. There is hope. And the angel says that she's going to be the one to give birth to a son, and that son is the one that everyone's been waiting for, the Messiah, the one who is to reconcile us all to the Father, to bring God's glory in its fullness, the branch of Jesse that Isaiah foretold. And then we have to ask, can she even hope that this is true? Can she believe it? The angel tells her about her relative Elizabeth, so she goes and sees her. And when she gets there, Elizabeth, baby, jumps in her womb. She's filled with the Holy Spirit, God's presence, and exclaims, Blessed are you among women. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. What an affirmation of the hope within Mary. I want to point out two things that I, that I see about hope right now. Rarely does God make us hope alone. If we are willing to share our hope with others, a couple of things happen. One is that hope can be and often needs to be affirmed in us. Our hope is in the Lord. My hope is in the Lord. Sometimes we need to pause and tell ourselves this. Psalm 39, David writes, Show me, Lord, my life's end and number, the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. Everyone is but a breath. And sometimes we feel more like that than others, don't we? Even those who seem secure, he writes, in vain they rush about, heaping up wealth without knowing whose it will finally be. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. There may be a little less rushing around this Christmas, a little. So far, it's been a little crazy. And if there's less, that might help us focus to tell ourselves where our true hope is at, like David does. I love the Passion translation of that verse 7 in Psalm 39. It says, And now, God, I'm left with one conclusion. My only hope is to hope in you alone. And sometimes... Sometimes we can tell ourselves this, but at other times we need someone else to tell us. That's why I think Mary went to Elizabeth. God used Elizabeth to give hope to Mary. The, what was said to her was actually happening. Now some of us open up and express our need 
for encouragement and, and uh, that affirmation of hope pretty easily. Others, it might take a terrifying angel to show up to tell us to go and find that kind of encouragement from others. During these times, I encourage you not to wait. Things can get pretty serious. We can be pretty discouraged in the darkness and the struggle. So don't wait to ask for help. And, and I encourage you, don't wait to ask someone else where their hope meter is at. To ask if they need some encouragement and help. The psalmist sure knew this feeling. He writes, why, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For yet I will praise him, my Savior and my God. This is such a great breath prayer to pray just as you go throughout your day or as you sit there to breathe in and say, why are you so downcast? Put your hope in God. When you're feeling that heaviness, the heaviness of life around you, you can breathe that in. It's not a denial of the struggle. In fact, it's an affirmation that, boy, life can be a struggle at times and we need to put our hope in the only one that can truly deserves our hope. Put our hope in God. Now, as much as our hope needs to be affirmed at times, it, it also needs to be clarified. Can be and needs to be clarified. Our hopes need this once in a while. So don't get me wrong. Many of our hopes in this life are good and and we should work towards them, to have them being met in this life. But we have an ultimate hope, one that we can put our full trust in. For example, I'm, I'm hoping to win my soccer pool, Champions League soccer pool this year. Uh, and if you look at the table, I'm doing fairly well right now. But when my teams don't do that well, I can get discouraged and down to the dumps and it can really affect me. If my numbers slip, and that's foolishness. We can end up putting our hope in a lot of things in this world. And these things will let us down. Our hope does not have to be dependent on circumstances. Even circumstances more important than my soccer pool. This week in our family devotional, we came across Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Chapter 1, where he talks about hope. And he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. So what is this hope to which we are called? Paul writes about, he clarifies a bit in his letter to the Colossians in chapter 127 when he says, to them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul echoes this idea that God's presence in us, with us, among us, is our true hope. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And glory here is the Greek word doxa, as in doxology, singing the doxology, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. The doxa, glory, the giving of praise and honor to that which is due, that praise and honor. Glory can also mean weightiness. Like God's Shekinah glory was the cloud that settled in the tabernacle, in the temple, in the Holy of Holies, a visible manifestation of God's presence, in some ways a symbol of the day that we'll be fully in the presence of the weighty glory of God. And in some amazing way, I get to share in that glory. That is the hope of glory, when we are fully in God's presence. Our hope that we will one day experience the fullness of all that God has for us as his creation. And you might say, well, that's great, Pastor, but my knee hurts today, or my marriage is fracturing today, my loved one is sick now, how is this hope of glory affect us today? C.S. Lewis 
writes a little bit about this, and he says, Hope is one of the theological virtues. This means that a continual looking forward to the eternal world is not, as some modern people think, a form of escapism or wishful thinking. But one of the things a Christian is meant to do, it does not mean that we are to leave the present world as it is. If you read history, you will find that the Christians who did most for the present world were just those who thought most of the next. It is since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they have become so ineffective in this. Can we begin to see what God wants us to hope for? That Jesus invites us to put our hope in him, Christ in us, and to let that impact our lives, his presence filling us, shape how we respond to our circumstances, relationships and struggles, and have an impact in the midst of them. The struggles that will cause us to despair often are what will produce in us character to give us that hope, the hope of glory, trusting God fully to use it for his good. And Mary, Mary didn't know what the outcome of having this baby would be. Even some of her hopes were misplaced and had to be clarified throughout her life. And how the hopes and fears of all would be fulfilled by this baby Messiah of hers would be much different than anyone expected. I love this weight picture that Grace has painted. This baby waiting in that belly would prove that he is the one we can put all our hope in. That we can wait on him the one who would give us the presence of God with us, in us, the one who can redeem our struggles and even use them to make us more like Jesus. Why so downcast, O my soul? Put your hope in God. But it even goes further. He's going to come and put everything right. Jesus is going to do that. And he will show us what true glory looks like. But in the meantime, Jesus invites us to put our hope in him, trusting him for all the fullness we were created for. And to have a true hope is to look beyond this world, experiencing a real relationship with the one who fulfills our hopes, bringing heaven to earth, and along with that, the peace, joy, and love that we all long for in little and big ways each and every day. And even a pandemic can't stop that from happening. That's the power of hope that we can have in him. And we're going to sing in a minute here, and we're going to sing about the King of Kings, A song which retells the story of all our hopes. So let's pray honestly before we do. Jesus, sometimes we hope for things that we know will not fulfill us instead of hoping in you. In this season of Advent, of waiting, show us us who we can share this challenge with and And show us how to put our hope in you, to remind ourselves and and to have that hope clarified for us. Do that for us this year, to find ourselves in you, the hope of glory. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen.
invite you once again to open up your hands to receive this blessing and benediction. This Advent, may you meet the King of Kings in a new, deeper way because of this year, because of the struggle, because of the waiting and the longing, because of the hope that you have in Him. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Go in peace and hope. Don't. I was no. just hoping we had a toaster okay. recently. Okay, I'll come back to look. Okay. All right. Well, eating the goat story, I think yeah. it needed to be cut anyways. Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was, Shannon was our angel of mercy. Yeah. Right. I lost my cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I was really glad you were lighting the candle. I, I can't operate these things.